Hi, I'm Steve Place, and welcome to another edition of Nonprofit Spotlight. As you know, a Nonprofit Spotlight is a production of the Volunteer Advisory Committee here at Community Television. And every edition, we highlight a nonprofit doing wonderful, wonderful work. And uh, this edition, we're particularly pleased to have with us uh, powering potential. Uh, and with us, we have Janet Lathan. Janet, am I pronouncing your right name correctly? Yes. Great. And uh, Janice, I'll hasten to add before we start that uh, uh, Keith and I, who's our producer, with whom you've, you've chatted, uh, we wanted to kind of broaden our, our reach with this program. We didn't know that we'd be broadening in, in, into international you know, <laughs> scope now. So we're just uh, we're very excited to have you here. Uh, Janice, as we get started, uh, I did read on the website that, uh, that you started this uh, uh, nonprofit and uh, this great work in 2006 when you were on safari in Tanzania and you greeted the people in Swahili. <laughs> that is just so impressive. But so tell us a little bit more about yourself and your background and, and how you got started with this just fantastic work. Well, I'm a Midwesterner. I was born in South Dakota and raised in Minnesota. And after college, I moved to New York City to pursue a career as an actress. I wanted to act in the classics. That didn't work out. So I started modeling. I did that for three years. And then I got into computers and I started a computer consulting business specializing mm -hmm. in training and database design. And I had that business for about 25 plus years. And <clears throat> as you mentioned, then I went to Tanzania on a safari in 2006. And I studied Swahili in preparation for the safari. And when we visited a school, I introduced myself in Swahili. Gina Longu ni Janis, Mimi ni Mwalimu, ni nafundisha ilimu ya computer. I said, my name is Janice. I am a teacher. I teach computers. And the kids just exploded into I can applause. Imagine, yeah. <laughs> and that that when my heart was just leaping out to them. And in that moment, I decided, oh, I want to come back here and spend more time with these people who are giving me this beautiful feeling. I just felt so deeply appreciated. And so in that moment, I decided I'm going to go home, I'm going to raise money, I'm going to buy computers and come back and spend a month teaching them how to use the computers. And then I learned that they didn't have electricity. So that was a little kink in the plan. But then I found out that the headmaster had solar energy at his house. Mm -hmm. So I went back the next year with um, two laptops with um, long life batteries and the headmaster would recharge the batteries, bring them to the school. And then I found a vendor, a solar uh, vendor in Tanzania, and we got um, a grant from the US Embassy in Tanzania to put in a solar system and then five computers. And that's how we got started. That's wonderful. And so your background as a computer consultant, I guess this fired your imagination when you're in Tanzania and you're, you're, you're seeing the folks who are, are, are thirsty for information and be, be able to, you know, access, you know, what we have in the wide world in terms of knowledge and, and that and uh, the obstacles of really not having uh, electricity or having uh, um, systems that were able to operate that way. Um, Tell me a little bit about uh, the work in, in Tanzania and uh, uh, the, 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 the scope of it now that you have it going. Well, my big dream when I started was to put 10 computers in one school. And now we have over um, 300 devices in 33 schools in Tanzania. And we've also expanded to Peru. And that's a story I'll get into in a minute. Please, yeah. And so, and the reason, the reason we decided to expand, like I said, my, my big dream was just to put computers in that one school. But one day I was at that school talking to the headmaster and he said to me, Janice, all these students are transferring into our school. And I said, really, why? <laughs> and he looked at me like I had two heads. He said, because of the computers. Isn't that something? And I, I said, really, could I, could I see the data on that? And so he showed me, and there had been a 500% increase in the number of students who 
transferred into that school and even more wanted to transfer in, but there wasn't room. And that's when I realized, okay, we have to expand to other schools. Otherwise, every kid in the district is going to want to come to this school. And so we worked closely with the, um, the government officials there, and we reached out to the, the district education officer to help choose other schools. And we went into three more schools, and then we grew from there. Did you find that uh, the government officials in uh, Tanzania are, are uh, cooperative or helpful? They're encouraging you to really get this work done? Oh, very much so. Very much so. I mean, one, of, one district education officer told me, Janice, you have no idea what you're doing to these students. It's a, for example, one day I was at our pilot school, Banjika, in the Karatu district of Tanzania. Mm -hmm. And I was walking across the schoolyard and we had just installed the computers. And plus we put all this offline digital educational content on the computers. I saw that as well, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, they don't have access to the internet, right? So, but, but we put on offline content, Wikipedia articles, Khan Academy videos, all sorts of material. So this student came out of the computer lab after having looking, you know, been looking at all this content and he saw me and he ran up to me and he goes, Madam, Madam, I just learned that a man walked on the moon. I mean, think about that. Think about how that would just blow open your mind as to what's possible for others as well as yourself. So that's the kind of impact we had. I got, um, a note from one student said, you know, you have brought us from a dark environment and now we are going to be like shining stars. I mean, it's beautifully, beautifully expressed, yeah. Yeah, I mean, for, you know, they because their textbooks are outdated and they have so few textbooks, like they didn't even know that a man had walked on the moon. Yeah. I mean, it's hard to conceptualize, Janice, for those of us who uh, not necessarily have grown up in the technology and informational age, but have that ready access to computers and internet and all this knowledge around sometimes so much of it that we just know how, don't know, you know really how to use it or what to grasp or how to really incorporate it into our lives or people who don't have that, who have lived so long in a vacuum of this. It's just a wonderful transformative experience. It, it really is. I get the most touching, um, you know, notes from some of the students. It just, it just really it brings me to tears every time. Yeah. Are you and your staff uh, in contact with the, the students and, of course, the government officials and people who are actually physically operating some of the, But you, uh, you are kind of in, in touch with those folks and kind of get some feedback about what's going on. Well, yes, we even. In 2016, we established an independent local organization oh, in yeah. Tanzania, uh -huh. which is run completely by Tanzanians. And, you know, we fund them, but they have local control. They order the equipment, you know, together we work on the plans, they order the equipment, they implement it, they install the solar, the computers, they do the training, they do the monitoring and evaluation. And so, so they, so yes, and we do definitely stay in touch with them. That's wonderful. I mean, and mentioning, of course, uh, uh, vacuums and funding, <laughs> who I would be remiss without uh, suggesting to our viewers who will see this uh, several different times at several different you know, occasions to, to really make a donation to your organization. Santa Cruz, people in Santa Cruz are really wonderfully generous. Uh, and I think it would be worthwhile for them to find a few dollars on their budgets to uh, go on your website at poweringpotential.org. Yes. And make a donation and, and support in any way that they can this wonderful work. So, well, thank you. So and now that you know, this is just such a great story and, and the, the, the solar powered computers and the digital libraries, all this is just so wondrous uh, to have. Tell us uh, now you were going to mention how you got into the Peruvian Amazon. This is, must be another story that's just just as fascinating as the first. Well, a few years ago, I got an email out of the blue from a woman who a, is a Fulbrighter. And she said, you are doing in Tanzania exactly what I want to do in Peru. Use the Raspberry Pi computer because mm -hmm. it's low watt. Use solar energy and training. 
And so could we work together to implement the program in Peru? And so she's taken the lead on that effort. And we now have one school in Peru, that, in Iquitos, that has 25 solar powered computers, Raspberry Pi computers, with all of this educational content on it. So the Raspberry Pi computer now, uh, who's that manufactured by? Are they manufacture that or design that specifically for opportunities where there, there isn't electricity or, or, or that kind of thing? Well, it was started by a foundation in the UK, the Raspberry Pi Foundation, specifically to get people interested in actually tinkering with computers again. Mm -hmm. And it only takes five watts of electricity, which is really important because when you're installing a solar energy, system to run the computer lab, you know, five watts as opposed to 800 watts is a big difference. So it's, it's very practical. We also found monitors in Tanzania that run on DC electricity and are only 10 watts. So our whole unit is only 15 watts. So it's, it's really a practical, affordable solution. And it's perfect for these rural schools that don't have electricity. You know, uh, it's not a surprise to me that uh, this was developed in the UK, that, it, that they are a land of tinkerers and always have been. So to have an opportunity to tinker with things that are, you know, more new age than their, their tractors and their uh, their automobiles, I'm sure that that's something that they really, they really enjoy. Now, um, uh, how has this grown in, in the Peruvian Amazon? Uh, you started uh, with the, a school and you have something going and what's the kind of the growth rate of that been? Well, we just have one school there with the 25 computers. Dana Renzi, who is taking the lead in that effort, she was down there when the pandemic hit. And so she had to come back and she's going back in September to complete the training that she had started when the pandemic hit. But right now she's just focused on that one school. Powering Potential's focus really now is, is on Tanzania. We have this big project to implement our program at 23 schools in My one goodness. district. Yeah. It's a three-year, $900,000 project. And when it's completed, we'll have all of the public secondary schools in one district will have um, a computer lab mm -hmm. with yeah. all that educational content. Yeah. Now we can study that district to, to go to other districts. Right. Now, what, uh, what, what age range are these students? And is this a, a kind of elementary school, preliminary school, preparatory schools that they're, they're moving on toward perhaps to something in a, in a higher education? Well, it's um, secondary education, secondary school. So it's, it's comparable in the U.S. It's like eighth, ninth, 10th, and 11th Wonderful grade. Wonderful time to learn, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And is the, is the hope that uh, this is going to uh, uh, engender a lot of interest uh, in, in Tanzania to have uh, uh, higher education for more of their population and make it you know, more, more informed and knowledgeable, more world citizens? Well, yes, that's definitely one of the goals and also to give this, the students skills so they can secure employment. And we did a survey of students who had graduated from our program and 58% of the students who responded said that they had secured employment because of their new technology skills. And 60% said that they went on to get more education. That's wonderful. Now, do you and your staff uh, have an opportunity to travel uh, and, and, and go to the schools and watch this development and try to help that you can to implement a lot of the things that, uh, that you're planning? Well, yes, I've been to Tanzania 16 times. Oh, my God. <laughs> they should issue you dual citizenship or something. You know? <laughs> well, in the beginning, of course, I was going over to, to well, I, I didn't know when I started this that there was going to you know, be 16 years later and I would still be going at it and we'd be in 33 schools in another country. But I, you know, I just, when I went over, it was just to get things established, but it just grew organically. And so many people were interested in, you know, you asked me about the government officials, the, the yes. government officials were very interested. Like we had a minister of state, um, work with me to facilitate the implementation of the program. And the district where he has his constituents mm -hmm. and he got the local district council to um, to donate some funds for that. And so that is one of our districts now. And 
Also, like the, the then president of Tanzania, President Kikwete, I've met him a few times. The ambassador, the Tanzanian ambassador to the US invited me in 2015, I think it was, to go to Tanzania with a VIP group that mm -hmm. she was leading. And we had lunch at the state house with the president. And then we were invited to present our program at Education Week in Dodoma, which is the capital of Tanzania. <clears throat> excuse me, and the president was there and he came and he, he was very impressed. He wrote me a letter afterwards about how impressed he was with our organization and encouraging us to continue. So the, the government is, is really behind this, very much so. Oh, that's wonderful. And as you know, uh, the hallmark of uh, successful programs like this, one of the signal features is, is they're modelable, that you can use this as a model and the model can be transferred to other places. Is there some interest or talk about expanding this uh, uh, in other places uh, on the African continent? I get requests all the time. Could you please bring your program to our country, to our school? from Liberia, from Nigeria, from India, even. My goodness. Um, so, and, and it really is a, a very practical, a scalable project. It's, it, you know, the solar energy, the pies, the training, it's a one-stop shop um, program. And I, I would love to see it expanded around the world. <laughs> But uh, for the moment, uh, your, your, your focus is uh, expanding it into more schools in, uh, in Tanzania? Well, right now we're focused. Right now, our team in Tanzania is at the Nane Nane School in Morogoro District, and they're oh. implementing a program right there. Um, yesterday, they put in the solar energy system, and they'll be done with that in a couple of days, and then they'll do a couple of weeks of training. And then we are going to launch our 23 school project, our three year 23 school project for the Karatu District. We are funding for that now. The first year is 276,000. <clears throat> mm -hmm. And we have a very robust monitoring and evaluation plan for that, like I said, because we want to study that then so that we can expand to other districts. And again, uh, folks who would like to donate to this wonderful work can do so on your farmpotential.org uh, website. And uh, the, the, the 23 school project, you say this is a three year uh, timeline on this? Yes, yes. We're going to do seven schools the first year, um, seven schools the next year, and eight schools the last year. Mm -hmm. But in terms of geography, I, I don't know the landmass of Tanzania, but right. it, it's on the east coast of Africa, mm -hmm. and north-south, it is in the middle. So it's, it's just south of Kenya, and it's on the Indian Ocean. Interesting. Yeah. And so um, I, I noticed on your website that you have a, a fairly large and versatile and extremely well qualified staff. Now, those folks are are part of the team that really goes in and makes this happen. Yes, I've been very fortunate to have very high qualified um, people get involved with Powering Potential. We have a woman who is the former director of information technology at Teachers College from Columbia University. Wow. And we have, um, that's Ina Haynes. And then we have Rich Siegel, who is a PhD at the Thomas J. Watson Research Lab at IBM. He's our main tech guy. <clears throat> and um, we, we have I, I'm very strict about the finances and the chair of our board is a partner in, uh, in an accounting firm. Our bookkeeper is a CPA. We have oh. an, an auditor from KPMG on our board. Wonderful. And we have another wow, financial person. Yeah, so. I guess. Huh? <clears throat> So the, uh, the Raspberry Pi, of course, is a solar powered uh, computer use. Now, who creates the digital library that you make use of that? Well, we partner with a couple organizations, One World Possible, and they put together, they compile all of this um, educational content and they call it RACHEL, it's an acronym, Remote Access Centers, Hotspots for Education and Learning, mm -hmm. something like that, they don't, mm -hmm. and so we, they make it available offline, so we use their uh, content and 
they also create a device that you can buy with all of their content and just install it in the network. Um, in the beginning, we installed it ourselves on a Raspberry Pi, but now we're using their devices. So that's one. And then we also partner with a Tanzanian company called Shule Direct, which has dis digitized the Tanzanian secondary school curriculum. Oh my and made that available offline and on Raspberry Pis, because as mm -hmm. I'm sure you know, the Pis use Linux, the Linux-based operating system. Mm -hmm. And so we also install that on our system. I can imagine that uh, this digital library is certainly uh, fairly comprehensive in terms of the breadth and depth of its knowledge. Well, it has the Khan Academy videos. Oh, uh -huh. It has, several Wikipedia articles, it has U, uh, UNESCO teacher resources, it has, um, you know, a typing tutor, because, you know, these students, like, they don't even know how to type. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of them haven't even seen a computer before. Yeah. And, and then, you know, medical reference books, there's a, a famous book, if there's no doctor in the village for African villages, that's on there, the, the Gutenberg books. It's just a huge a wealth of, if you go to the worldpossible.org web, website and mm -hmm. look under Rachel, you can see um, a link to the content. It's, it's amazing. And a lot of this content, you were saying that uh, the very large percentage of the folks that you're talking to who have gone through this program have been able to get employment. So there must be some very practical information there that's helping people in the stepping stones toward you know, becoming employed. Well, and just the technology skills, the fact that they can use a computer, because computers are everywhere, right? I mean, and in, in Africa, they're, I mean, when I first went there 16 years ago, you know, hardly anybody had a computer. There was a, an internet cafe in the town. Oh. Um, but you know, if you have computer skills, it really helps you get a job. All the safari companies, you know, need people that with computer skills, you know, the shops now all have computers. And so it's, it, yeah, just the fact that they can use a computer really helps. And we teach them, you know, the word processing spreadsheet. We use LibreOffice. So we, you know, spread words processing spreadsheet, database, presentation software. So they're, they're learning it all. Yeah, I think, uh, again, uh, we take uh, for granted uh, uh, that the, the computer sciences here in the United States, for instance, or in other more developed parts of the world, uh, it's a very competitive, uh, uh, you know, a very competitive field to get into that. But some place like Tanzania, for instance, where there may not be as many people who have these skills, then uh, it's an, a more of an opportunity just to be able to have those computer skills on board makes them you know, more qualified and to be able to get into something like that. Exactly, exactly. And it's also encouraging students to um, get advanced degrees in technology. For example, Alban Mathias, who is the executive director of the Tanzanian organization, he was the physics teacher at the school that I started at, Banjika, and he got, he was so excited when we put computers into that school, he just thought that they were the coolest thing, and he got inspired to go back to college um, and learn more about computers, and he now has a Bachelor of Engineering degree in computer science and networking, and oh, yeah. He's now running the show over there and has been for years. And then there's a lot of stories like that. Yeah, well, I can imagine that there are. Uh, this is just such a wonderful opportunity for folks, again, who, who don't understand you know, how important it is to be able to have access to, to information to be able to access what the world has to offer in terms of what can qualify you to fulfill your dreams. I think a lot of this is, is the, the ability to dream larger. Exactly. I mean, part of our mission state, statement is to um, expand imagination, stimulate mm -hmm. imaginations, uh -huh. um, use technology to enhance education and stimulate imaginations while respecting and incorporating values of the local culture. Because it's not just what we do, it's also how we do it. You know, it's, we're all about empowering the Tanzanians and thinking of ourselves as supporting them and 
giving them local control and letting them lead the way and and you know we are just supporting their dreams i was very impressed in fact when i read uh, through the website uh how important it was for you to be you know, the cultural competency the cultural sensitivity to doing the doing what you're doing it's one thing to go in and offer a service that certainly is on its face needed but do so you know in in, in the ways that uh, uh model their culture and then the people and the people who are there in tanzania i think that's part of the reason why we're very well respected in tanzania because we um you know that's our approach and also the Siegel Family Foundation is, has been supporting Powering Potential since 2009. Mm -hmm. And they have been a leader in this different approach to philanthropy in terms of supporting local leaders and um, you know, giving them you know, the, the, the control and mm -hmm. um, having them you know, take the lead and, yeah. and manage the, you feel like, uh, because this uh, cultural element is so important, was there any, any resistance to culturally to uh, people coming in and establishing something that really is going to you know, fundamentally change the culture in certain ways? You mean resistance from the Tanzanians? Yeah. Oh, no, no, they have welcomed us warmly with open arms. They're Wonderful. eager for us. I get so many requests. We had... Uh, you know, when we when we first, you know, I, when, when I went to that one school, then when we expanded to three more schools, we had nobody who could teach in those other schools. So, and I did not want to bring people over from the West to teach. And so I said, okay, what we need to do is we need to have a, um, a training course and teach the secondary school graduates how to teach this you know technology and so we put together a, a i think it was a six-week course and we interviewed the students and we accepted students and we trained them and the the teacher we hired was a tanzanian teacher and when he finished that program he said to me he i ran into him in town one day and he said you know i've just gotten a job as the technology um specialist in ngorongoro district could you please bring your program to ngorongoro district mm -hmm. and so we did and we now have three schools in that district and no i mean they, they i i'm just i have requests all the time they're so eager for our well, program I'm, yeah, I, I'm just so impressed by not only the substance of what you're doing but uh, the cultural sensitivity with which you're doing it that's uh uh, sometimes all too rare in the world we have today, oh. but we appreciate it. Uh, Janice, we are just about out of time here. Uh, thank you again for being here, for broadening our outlook here at Nonprofit Spotlight, but for the wonderful work you're doing. I think people want to know more about this, and they should. They can go to powerandpotential.org, their website, and take a look at it again. Maybe a contribution of some kind would certainly be welcome. But Janice uh, Lathan, uh, founding member, founding director of Power and Potential. Thank you so much for being here. It's been a delight talking to you and learning from you. So thank you so much again. Oh, thank you. It's really been my honor and my pleasure. Um, this has been Steve Place for Nonprofit Spotlight. Tune in again in the next edition when we look at another nonprofit doing wonderful work such as Power and Potential. <laughs>